-hmm. For the record, it's 5.15 p.m. on March 22nd, 2018. The Wenatchee City Council is out of executive session. I'll call the meeting to order. First item is a pledge to our flag. Where are we at on turns these? I don't even know. Who's turn? I'll do it. Mark? Thank you. <laughs> Please rise. Oh, I never did. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Council Member Kulas. And for the record, uh, we have six council members here, and Council Member Huffaker is uh, not here this evening. Consent items. The first item on our agenda this evening would be this evening's agenda vouchers and the minutes from the previous meetings, and then a couple of agreements that we talked about in our uh, work session last week. Your Honor, I make a motion that we adopt our uh, consent items consisting of the agenda for this evening, vouchers and minutes from previous meetings, also to authorize the mayor to enter into an amended CHG agreement with the Washington State Commerce Department and an amended subgrant agreement with the Community Action Council to allow for a HIN funding increase of $30,500. Also for the council to authorize the mayor to enter into an amended CHG agreement with the Washington State Commerce Department and an amended subgrant agreement with the Women's Resource Center to allow a funding transfer between existing landlord liaison grant budget line items. Second. Motion by Council Member Kulas, second by Council Member Harold to adopt the evening's consent items, including the agenda vouchers and the minutes from the previous meetings, and two changes to some agreements with the Washington State Department of Commerce regarding some sub sub <coughs> agreements. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Citizen comment. This would be a time when inter, inter, any member of the <clears throat> audience that wish to address the council on something that's not on today's agenda, we'd ask you to give us your name and address in three minutes. Yes, sir, Mr. Campbell. How are you? Great. How are you? Good. Good. I have some information to hand out. Is that okay? Yeah. Are you guys? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Okay. Thank you. My name is Brian Campbell, 1837 Jefferson Street. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Brian Campbell, as I said, 1837 Jefferson Street. As you can tell, I'm reading this. Um, <laughs> In response to Joe Morrison's request to the council <coughs> to bring up the issue of districting again, I'd like to offer the following. First, I'd like to preface with the fact that I'm a board member of the United Neighborhood Association that has expressed their opposition to districting, but I applaud and support all of the efforts of the Electoral Process Committee, CAFE, and other individuals and groups that, as I, try and serve the underprivileged and underserved members of our fine community. The council, of which I was a member at the time, authorized the mayor to assemble an Electoral Process Committee to look at all options for electing council members uh, almost three years ago. I offered to serve on the committee but wasn't appointed. Uh, the mayor and some council members were afraid of the legal ramifications from the Yakima lawsuits from uh, the ACLU. Yakima is a much larger community with a much higher Latino population and hadn't elected a Latino to the council for 37 years in spite of attempts for Latino representation. Wenatchee's had uh, Latino representation on the council for many years, and in the most recent election, Ruth Esparza, congratulations, defended her council seat against another Latino candidate. Wenatchee has welcomed Latino representation and encouraged it through public outreach, hiring a Latino public information officer, printing agendas in Spanish, and engaging the community. Latino representation on the Wenatchee City Council closely mirrors the percentage of registered Latino voters. Simply put, it appears that out of fear, Wenatchee is trying to solve a problem we don't have. The Voters' Rights Act recently passed in Washington State that will allow cities a tool of choosing districting without the fear of violating federal law. This is a much needed option for those cities that have a problem and need a solution. I was disappointed to recently hear the mayor on KPQ radio saying that Wenatchee could switch to districting or be sued. I believe that, that fear mongering and it's not true and it puts the council in an untenable position. In my communications with the ACL, the ACLU, I didn't get the impression that Wenatchee was even on the radar with the proactive actions that we're taking. Also, 
um, I attended many of the electoral process committee meetings throughout, and not only didn't I see any evidence of switching from a council uh, that's elected at large to districting would help with the goal of increasing Latino representation on the council. The committee even eliminated the at-large option long before the end of their process and receiving irrelevant information for that decision. Several cities have voted to eliminate their districting election process and switch to at-large elections, such as Bonnie Lakes, Nahomish, Prosser, and Ellensburg. If the districting issue is brought up again for council action, please don't change the existing system that is setting such a good example for other cities. If you decide to consider to a change, please let the citizens that elected you decide if they want to change the process by which they did so. Thank you very much. Thanks, Brian. Anybody else wish to address the council? Good evening. My name is George Turner. I live at 933 Northwestern Avenue. I'm here this evening to represent NCW Vet Serving Vets uh, to give a little recognition to the mayor and to the council. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, Mayor, would you yes. mind coming out here? Absolutely. Uh, we recently have undertaken, we bought all of the old street signs in Wenatchee. We're refurbishing them and we're trying to see some of them to stay the way there are, other ones that may change, but we want to see mm -hmm. them stay here and that's a project that we're doing. And I made a, we have a little momentum there for you. When you're really doing this, that's good, but when you're not, you're <laughs> frank. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think people throw eggs at this pretty often? This one they will. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to thank you and so our appreciation. Oh, and there's a little poll back here <laughs> that you can leave <laughs> <laughs> it that way. Back. Only because everybody's right downtown. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. You can take this off and just set it on your desk or behind your desk. Small. <laughs> okay, let me take a photo. <laughs> that's all I have. Bonnie Lake, Crosser, Snohomish. That's great. It was Bonnie Lake. Mm -hmm. Come on, but because everything was downtown, not because of you know any of the ACLU or anything like that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, he's that is cool. <laughs> three. Well, three, three. Uh, no big. Thanks again, and thanks for everybody's support. So, so George, uh, just to make it clear, so. He, he went through the surplus auction that the city went. Did he outbid you? Uh, outbid him. No, I didn't bid on it. But he's donating. He's spending all his time, and all the money's going back to the, the vets. We are so a, a total volunteer, volunteer. nonprofit. So, we have no paid employees. 100% go to the vets. vets so. we're, we're known as the bunker. <coughs> we really help a lot of people. Thanks, George. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, George. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have two presentations tonight. The first regarding the 33rd Annual Good Scout Award honoree. Who's got that? They have that Let's one, Mayor. Forward. The proclamation for the 33rd Annual Good Scout Award honorees, Eric and Kristen Holmberg. Whereas the Boy Scouts of America has been at the forefront of instilling timeless values in youth since its founding in 1910. And whereas the national youth movement has made serving others through its values-based program its mission. And whereas the Boy Scouts of America is committed to helping millions of youth succeed by providing the support, friendship, and mentoring necessary to live a happy and fulfilling life. And whereas Eric and Kristen Holmberg have worked tirelessly in committing their resources of time, talent, and capital of the Grand Columbia Council of the Boy Scouts of America. And whereas Eric and Kristen Holmberg have worked tirelessly in committing their resources of time, talent, and capital to numerous community organization activities that work, that make our Wenatchee Valley a vibrant and healthy community. Therefore, be it, now therefore, I, Frank J. Kuntz, Mayor of the City of Wenatchee, do hereby proclaim and designate Eric and Kristen Holmberg as the Grand Columbia Council's 33rd Annual Good Scout Award honorees for their interest and dedication to instilling the timeless values of scouting, oath, and law in our Wenatchee Valley Boy Scouts and in making our community better. In witness whereof I have caused the seal of the city of Wenatchee to be affixed on this 23rd day of March 2018, Frank J. Kuntz, Mayor. Thanks, Mike. And if you get that to, to um, Allison, I'll make sure I get it to Eric and Kristen. 
I believe the uh, banquet's Wednesday. next Wednesday or Thursday, and I'll be going to that. And for those of you that don't know, and most of us remember Scala Vista up near, um, Eric and Kristen Holmberg basically saved that for the region. It was under a substantial amount of debt from the Yakima region of Boy Scouts, and they raised million plus dollars to buy it out of debt from the Boy Scouts folks to keep it in our community. So very worthy award for them. All right, next proclamation is regarding National Crime Victims Week. Who's got I have that, that one, Councilor Your Honor. Bailey? Whereas Americans are the victims of more than 26 million crimes each year, and crime can touch the lives of anyone regardless of age, national origin, race, creed, religion, gender, sexual orientation, immigration, or economic status. And whereas many victims face challenges in finding appropriate services, including victims with disabilities, young victims of color, deaf and hard of hearing victims, LGBTQ victims, tribal victims, elder victims, victims with mental illness, immigrant victims, teen victims, victims with limited English proficiency, and others. And whereas the entire community has a role to play, and whereas involving survivors helps victim service providers and criminal justice professionals understand the culture, values, and expectations of under and unserved victims who seek assistance and justice. And whereas engaging victims' communities and learning from leaders about their unique needs helps service providers foster a supportive and culturally relevant atmosphere in which victims seek help and healing. And whereas incorporating communities, existing experts, and trusted sources of support into efforts to fully serve survivors will help a criminal justice system response that is truly accessible and appropriate for all victims of crime. And whereas victims know best how to direct and manage their own lives and true recovery from crime will incorporate a victim's cultural, religious, economic, social, and personal interests. And whereas with, full weight of their, with the full weight of their community and victim services providers behind them, survivors will feel empowered to face their grief, loss, fear, anger, and shame without fear of judgment and will feel understood and worthy of support. Whereas National Crime Victims' Rights Week, April 1 through 7, 2018, is an opportune time to commit to ensuring that all victims of crime, even those who are challenging to reach or serve, are offered culturally and linguistically accessible and appropriate services in the aftermath of crime. And whereas the City of Wenatchee is hereby dedicated to building partnerships with trusted sources of support, including community leaders, religious groups, schools, and other agencies to better reach and serve all victims of crime, no matter their community. Now, therefore, I, Frank J. Kuntz, as mayor of the City of Wenatchee, do hereby proclaim the week of April 1 through 7, 2018 as Crime Victims' Rights Week and reaffirm the City of Wenatchee's commitment to creating a victim service and criminal justice response that assists all victims of crime during Crime Victims' Rights Week and throughout the year and to express our sincere gratitude and appreciation for those community members, victim service providers, and criminal justice professionals who are committed to improving our response to all victims of crime so they may find relevant assistance, support, justice, and peace. In Witness whereof I have caused the seal of the city of Wenatchee to be affixed on this 22nd day of March 2018. Frank J. Kuntz, Mayor. Thanks, Jim. Who's here? For you get that? Are you here? How are you? I think you come all the time. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. You bet. And for those of you that don't know, Sage has had quite a little week. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not with Sage. Yes, I know, but I was just going to, I wanted to, to make a point of, yeah. they do crime victim work, yeah, and so they've got a national award, yeah. and yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know, wasn't that cool? They have business, uh, non-profit of the well, year. Well, not only that, but they also got an award from our friends back in Washington, D.C. Oh, what they it was. did. Oh, yep, wonderful. Representative Reichert. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, we share the role with them, yes. and it's good. Yeah. They do great work. Oh. Thanks for all the work you do. Yeah. All right, thanks, Rick. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Action items <coughs> regarding our public records policy. Danielle. Yes, hello. Danielle Marchant, one of the assistant city attorneys. So our office is recommending that uh, the council pass the resolution proposed, um, which adopts a public records policy for the city of Wenatchee. 
Um, I don't know how familiar the council is with public records, <laughs> but it's been getting a lot of press um, recently with the legislature trying to opt themselves out and then the governor vetoing that. Um, the public records policy that we put forward will uh, kind of supplement the code provisions that are already uh, enacted by the city. And it supplements them in it, that it provides a more detailed procedure on how city staff and citizens um, can go to and look as a guideline for how these public records requests are going to be processed through the city. Um, when a request is going to require a deposit um, for funds, when a request is uh, going to be deemed abandoned, um, what city staff has to do in response to an abandoned request and some uh, things like that. So your code provides an overall structure and then the policy provides the meat on that structure. Mm -hmm. So are there any questions? I don't have any questions. Any questions for Danielle? If not, I would entertain a motion. Or I'll make a motion that we adopt resolution 2018-15, adopting a policy for the processing of public records requests. Second. Motion by Councilmember Kula, second by Councilmember Esparza to adopt resolution 2018-15, adopting a policy for the processing of public records requests. Discussion or any questions for Danielle while we have her here? I know there's a whole list of exemptions that I went through and yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. I think Danielle wishes there were more. <laughs> there are more under the federal statute, um, but it, it would be hard for our office to go through every single federal code section right. and pull them out. So, but somebody did it for the state um, RCWs and most yeah, cities really. adopt the the, um, the uh, table that we attach to the policy. Yeah, I assume, I assume that's what keeps us in line with the changes that came out of the legislature this Yeah, this yeah, session. every year um, the code revisor publishes a new list. Yeah. Okay. All right, any other discussion? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Thank Danielle. You. Thanks, Danielle. Thank you, Danielle. <laughs> All right, we've got a couple of uh, bid openings. So first, regarding McKittrick Street. Jacob, how are you this evening? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, thanks. Uh, Jacob Heiler, Engineering <coughs> Services Manager. Um, I am here for two items tonight. Tim, I think, um, I'm just going to pull up a PDF for you guys to see. Okay. I will take... <clears throat> Okay, so I've got a couple exhibits here. Um, this one is a little bit tough to see, and I apologize. The next one will be um, a little bit easier for you guys to, to see what we're proposing here. Um, first off, though, for the McKittrick Street project, this is a um, partially state-funded through the Transportation Improvement Board project um, that we've been working on over the last uh, year and a half, two years. Um, so what we are doing is rebuilding McKittrick Street between Pine and Wenatchee Avenue. Um, as part of that project, um, we will take the roadway section and create a three-lane section, so two through lanes and a, and a two-way left turn lane. Um, in addition to that, we'll widen out a little bit to, um, to accommodate that um, reconfiguration, add bicycle lanes, um, and then uh, sidewalks on both sides of the street. Also, we'll upgrade the, inf the storm infrastructure um, through that corridor. So if you're looking at the, the graphic here, um, it's split so that the top one shows from Pine Street working east towards the avenue. Um, and then the bottom shows the continuation of that um, down to Wenatchee Avenue. So you can see some of the, the striping and, and sidewalks that we're proposing there. Um, we uh, put the project out to bid um, and opened bids on March 9th. We had a total of four bids. Um, Hearst Construction is our low or um, our lowest responsible bidder um, at a product total cost of $866,415.65. Um, we are recommending that we award this uh, project to Hearst Construction. Um, in terms of the expenses, um, it's actually about 2% lower than what the 2018 um, budget had, had anticipated. Um, unfortunately, though, our grant funding wasn't quite as strong as we had <coughs> anticipated, so there is a little bit more city funding going towards this project than was originally budgeted. <coughs> Um, in terms of schedule, um, we plan to start midway through April. Um, it's an 85-day contract, so we should be finished towards the end of August. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take those. 
I, I don't have any questions. I do know that uh, at the Public Works Committee, we, d we did discuss some of the right-of-way acquisitions in there, and we got a little over budget on some of our right-of-way, but we did that in order to get the project started, because otherwise we were going to be at it for a while. Mm -hmm. Any other any questions for uh, Jacob? If not, I'd entertain a motion. Your Honor, I move for City Council to award the contract for the construction of the McCarthy <coughs> Street re Rebuild Project Number 1501 to Hearst Construction, LLC, in the amount of $866,415.65 and authorize the Mayor to approve the construction contract. Second. Motion by Councilmember Harold, second by Councilmember Bailey to uh, authorize the mayor's signature on the construction contract for the McKittrick Street re rebuild for Hearst Construction. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All Thanks, right. Jacob, and on to Red Apple Road. Yep, so I'm going to sound a little bit like a broken record here. Um, <laughs> so this one, uh, Red Apple Road between Miller Street and Okanagan um, is also a partially state funded through the Transportation Improvement Board project. Um, we've been working on this one uh, since the beginning of 2017. Um, in terms of improvements here, um, you can see, uh, again, the top view here is starting at Miller Street, working east towards Okanagan. Um, we are installing a mini roundabout at the intersection of Red Apple and Miller Street. Um, redoing sidewalks on the north side of the street um, and that, as well as sidewalks at the intersections on the south side of the street. Uh, parking will be reduced to one side of the street um, to accommodate uh, new bike lanes. Um, in addition to that, there's a second page here that shows the continuation uh, as you work again east towards Okanagan Avenue. Um, <clears throat> so there's that. I'll go back to the first page um, since that one's got a little bit more going on. Um, RH2 is our design consultant on this project, um, exactly the same as McKittrick Street. We opened bids on March 9th. We had a total of three bids for this particular project. Um, Pipkins Construction is our low responsible bidder um, at a total of $1,496,687.01. Um, overall, budget-wise, um, we're 9% below um, the overall 2018 budget. Um, and then that, that holds true with city funding as well. We're below what we had anticipated. Um, similar construction schedule. This one will be 90 days rather than 85, but again, beginning in April, ending towards the end of August. Um, and staff recommends awarding this project to Pipkin Construction. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Is, is this one that had a bunch of right-of-way that was needed acquisition on or very little? Very little on this one. This one was a couple temporary construction easements, um, but otherwise we were out of, right out of the, yeah, exactly, which is fantastic. Yeah, makes it a little easier, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> Any questions for Jacob? If not, I'd entertain a motion. Well, Your Honor, I uh, move for the City Council to award the contract for the construction of Red Apple Road Preservation Project 1607 to Pipkin Construction. In the amount of one million four hundred ninety-six thousand six hundred eighty-seven dollars and one cent, and authorize the mayor to approve the construction contract. Second. Motion by Councilmember Bailey, second by Councilmember Harold to authorize the mayor's signature on the Red Apple Road Construction Preservation Project Number One Six Zero Seven to Pipkin Construction. Discussion. Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Thanks, Jacob. Thank you very much. Jessica, our third reiteration for Coleman Oil. <laughs> yes. Good evening, Jessica Shaw, Environmental Manager for the Public Works Department. Uh, tonight we have uh, another temporary discharge agreement for Coleman Oil. Uh, they have been working very hard to continue to assess the limits of the contamination, also working on a feasibility <coughs> study and continuing to pump groundwater out of the recovery wells that they installed last summer and about once or twice a month discharge some of that treated groundwater into the city's sewer system. So they are now under an agreed order with the Department of Ecology, which gives them a specific timeline to get all of these assessments and studies done to come up with, okay, what do, what do we need to be 
to do to be done with this project and have it considered to be cleaned up. So based on that schedule from Department of Ecology, I'm estimating they probably have about 18 months to two years worth of work left to be able to get to that point where they can say, here's what's going to happen with the site. So in the past, we were doing six-month temporary agreements with them. So tonight, we're just recommending the only change to the agreement would be that we give them a year. I think after a year, they should have a pretty good idea of what's next. And um, that'll, you can bring it back and discuss we'll again whether or, not, <laughs> whether or not it'll continue on or if that will be the <coughs> end of it. And we're not having any issues with Coleman Oil in terms of the stuff they're bringing us. It's meeting all of our requirements for pretreatment and all of that. That is correct. Yes, all of the batches that they've submitted have been well below the limits that we set for them. They've been very responsive and um, providing all of the data that we asked for. And when we've been missing things, they've promptly promptly provided the missing information. So they've been they've been great to work with, and we haven't seen any issues with the discharges. Great. Uh, Jessica, on the I guess that you know this is kind of becoming a you know the the gift that keeps on giving kind of thing. Yes. Uh, in terms of our I guess our costs, uh, they're being charged a x amount of dollars to to do the discharge itself. But in terms of staff time for monitoring and doing all that, are are we re recovering our costs through this process, or are we? I believe we are. We um, are charging them more for their discharges than what we're actually doing treatment of since their discharge is basically clean water mm -hmm. <laughs> that they've removed all the um, contaminants from. And so we're not providing a whole lot of treatment for the water they're discharging. It is mostly an administrative task. They're taking advantage of the fact that we have a wastewater discharge permit to the Columbia River and this is their means of returning that water back into the waterways. Um, so. I, I feel like we're not spending a whole lot of time with this. Mm -hmm. It usually only requires maybe about four hours of staff time a month. And we have been occasionally sending someone out just to take a look at what they're doing, make sure they're still following that. And that usually is only maybe a half hour to an hour's mm -hmm. worth of time. So okay. Good. Thank not you. too much time. And when they deposit into our system, they just find a spot and we tell them when they put it into our normal they don't dump it right in right they, they find a spot they do have so the interesting part about the coleman oil is prior to the oil sheen showing up on the river and all the other events that came out of that they were a city water and sewer or water and stormwater customer but they had a septic tank for their offices mm -hmm. down on shahala street so one of our initial conditions for them was to put in a sewer lateral They've since, as you may have noticed, tore down the office building and a lot of the other buildings on the site. So pretty much it is just a cleanup operation down there. So there is now a sewer lateral to the property. So for future development, it's all ready to be hooked up to so sewer. So they're using the sewer lateral. So they are using that sewer lateral as their discharge point. And it's nice then because it's controlled. It's right there where they're treating the water and... Um, so it just then, comes to the treatment plant as comes, if it's any yep, other sort of... like any other place. And then it's all prepped to go when they're done with the remediation work for whoever moves in there next. They have sewer service. Mm -hmm. okay. Good. All right. Any other discussion for Jessica? If not, I would entertain a motion. Your Honor, I will make a motion for City Council to authorize the mayor's signature on the agreement for a temporary discharge of treated groundwater to the City of Wenatchee's <coughs> publicly own treatment works. Second. Motion by Council Member Esparza, second by Council Member Markhart to authorize the mayor's signature on the agreement with Coleman Oil for temporary discharge. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Jessica. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> all right, Mr. Glenn DeVries, we're gonna start our housing work. Yes. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, last year, the council adopted <coughs> sweeping changes in our comprehensive plan for uh, policy guidance to redo how the city looks at housing for, so that we could uh, uh, provide for a greater diversity of housing, and uh, but at the same time have blended housing <coughs> that uh, works well with neighborhoods and provides neighbor, neighborhoods predictability. And uh, budget uh, for a consulting exercise, engaging urban designers and uh, architects was uh, set up and we did a request for proposals and received really uh, five really good proposals from qualified consultants. 
um, in review, a city review team took a look at the proposals and one really um, uh, was exceptional um, in meeting our needs, we believe, and that was uh, Makers Architecture and Urban Design. Um, these folks have done a lot of work in the city in the past and have done good work for the city. For example, the waterfront plan, uh, which we're having great success in implementing. And one of the great uh, features of their proposal is that we're getting their two top lead people doing the majority of the work in design and engaging stakeholders in the public in a very visual um, outreach and engaging process, uh, which, which I think will be, would be really positive. And one of the things that they suggested in their proposal is we asked them to uh, not just meet our request for a proposal, but if they had some additional ideas to put them forward. And they suggested a, a development economic feasibility analysis from a gentleman who uh, specializes in that, does it on the west side, but lives in Wenatchee, to take a look at the feasibility of how that, uh, the design and development standards would work in Wenatchee, which we think was an excellent addition. Uh, so staff is recommending that uh, the city council authorize the mayor uh, to enter into a contract with Makers Architecture and Urban Design in the amount of $141,100 and um, for this year, and we would anticipate taking that through a public process with the Planning Commission, engaging the community, and bringing you uh, suggested uh, recommendations for new code changes uh, <coughs> this year. I will say that Glenn came to the Finance Committee. This is slightly more than we had budgeted, and then I, of course, blamed him for going over budget. He blamed us because we had we're working on some projects downtown that he wants to study. So <laughs> he's learned well who to put the blame on. <laughs> <laughs> Your Honor, I make a motion that we authorize the mayor to enter into a contract with Makers Architecture and Urban Design, LLP, in the amount of $141,100 for the development of design, development, and procedural standards to facilitate a greater diversity of housing types. Second. Motion by Councilmember Kula, second by Councilmember Harold to authorize the mayor signature with a contract with Makers Architecture and Urban Planning to develop and design procedures to facilitate greater diversity of housing types. Discussion? Glenn, is, uh, where's their home offices? Where do they operate from? Um, on, the, on the west side, I, and, uh, I believe in Seattle. Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. The, if, if I might, um, I sat in on the review of the request for proposals or the qualifications and um, this this firm is is well known for they're really suited well for this project and we get their two principals mm -hmm. themselves working on it <coughs> and uh, they have particularly the the person who's founded the business has a tremendous experience in uh, housing and housing types and, and design standards mm -hmm. good any other uh, questions for glenn all right, hearing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Glenn. Thank you. Mr. Leonard, Regional Water Redundancy Study. <laughs> the last pit was dry, huh? Yeah. yeah the we redundancies, even... we have to keep drilling more holes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It seems redundant, doesn't yeah. it? So in, uh, yeah, this is for the redundancy study for the next regional water source. So in 2013, the regional water uh, board members, PUD, East Wenatchee Water District, and the city decided we needed to start looking for a redundant source location. And through that effort, um, we ended up looking at water quality, um, different factors, you know, our other sources on the Douglas County side of the river, um, so redundancy as far as location being on this side of the river so we didn't have river crossings um, water quality is kind of the big the big one are we have really good water our quality is really good up in our east bank aquifer where we currently pump where we only have to add chlorine um, so we wanted to find something consistent with that um, so through that effort ended up you guys know at the rock island dam down on the pud owned property on this side of the river above the Rock Island Dam, um, which was looked to be better quality water than what we had. So we last summer drilled a 10 inch well, or 12 inch well, thinking this is gonna be it. 
drilled it, we didn't find much water. Um, so that's not <clears throat> our next source location. So um, we've relooked at some different things and we don't want to give up completely on this site yet. Uh, we'd like to drill a few more wells. We're not going to um, go with the 12 inch diameter well. We're proposing going with eight inch diameter wells, which are more common for a typical homeowner well, which we have more drillers that are available to do that. So these wells, if they end up finding, uh, if we end up finding enough water uh, for a next source, these would be monitoring wells that we would need anyways through the project. Um, so, you know, we're not gonna, with these wells, if we do um, find a good aquifer, we're, we're still gonna end up having to drill uh, a bigger well to test the, uh, the capacity of that aquifer a little more. But with these three wells, um, our engineers think they'll be able to use the geophysical tools to really identify that aquifer to figure out the capacity um, without having that larger well. Um, so we're, you know, we're a few years into this uh, into this project since 2013. It's been an ongoing thing. So we're hoping, just to put it in perspective, I was looking back at the last regional when the regional water site was first was built that took about a 10 year <coughs> planning process. So we're, we're working our way up close to that already, but hopefully uh, by 2023, we'll maybe have something. Um, so this is to authorize a supplement with RH2 for um, about $160,000. Um, so RH2 is gonna hire a sub consultant to do the well drilling um, for these test wells. Matt, oh. didn't you say in that area there's other people that are finding water? Or? Yeah, so the PUD has their wells that they use to cool some components on the dam and for the dams, and they have good capacity in those. Um, they're not as good as we need, but they have decent capacity. And then Alcoa has really has wells just upstream that are have a lot of capacity. So, and we feel like there's similar characteristics where it's recharged by the river, kind of like we currently have. So we just need to find that, that rock pocket where we can pull that material from. So Matt, not to jinx the project because I really hope that we find water, <laughs> yeah. but do we have any other locations that we're looking at in case we don't find water? Um, we do, um, but the other locations, unfortunately, are look like, looking like they're going to require some water water treatment, oh. um, which, mm. so, but we do, there, I mean, if there was about 15, I think, locations that were studied when that, when this initial, before we started drilling and decided on this spot. So there is other locations, um, but there's just the water quality isn't as good. Yeah, or yeah. they're on the other side I of the would, river. I would articulate as we're trying to hit a home run, because <laughs> if we can find it on that side of the river, right now, you know, it comes up from Rocky Reach on the east side, crosses over the bridge. So we're hoping to find one on this side that doesn't have to cross over a bridge so that mm -hmm. if somehow the bridge went down, we would have water on our side. And so we're really trying to stay there mm -hmm. and find the spot where it's cheapest to get it up but also maintains the quality of the water because when you start treating it a lot and then you mix it with our waters, yeah. those could have some issues. The science people tell me you so we're really trying to find the home run spot. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the long term costs of treatment really add up um, versus if we um, don't hit the home run spot, which we'll know soon, then yeah. we'll go look for something that's more like a double, right? And <laughs> we'll be able yeah. to provide more water to us. But, but yeah, we're excited about this, this spot for sure. Well, I know we're going to find it. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, what, you said that the... the make a motion to find water. Yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> the water witch. Water witch. The, the first well, you were getting a little less than, I don't know it's how about much. 300, about 300 gallons 300 a gallon minute. A minute. What, what, what is the... We need over 1,000. 1,000, okay. Mm -hmm. So you're, we're cool. you're a long ways from we're long there. Ways there. Okay. We were a you know, perfect batting average. And yeah. Average. <clears throat> All right, if there's no further questions, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion for the City Council to authorize the Mayor to sign Supplement Number 3 with RH2 for the Regional Water Redundancy Study Project Number 1302. Second. Motion by Councilmember Poyer, second by Councilmember Markart to authorize the Mayor's signature on Supplement Number 3 with RH2 for Regional Water Redundancy Study Project 1302. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Matt. <clears throat> Thank you.
Steve King, Opportunity Zone application. Mm. Educate us on tax reform. <laughs> I need some help with that. <laughs> Evening, Mayor and Council. I have a map we'll bring up really quick. So at the, uh, let's see if I can get this down here. At the end of 2017, the federal government passed the Tax Act, and it um, created a tax uh, credit system effectively where capital gains, where companies or individuals could reinvest their capital gains uh, when they had a capital gain from selling assets or stock uh, into funds, which then would be uh, distributed into qualifying low income census tracts. This is a replacement to the former new market tax credit program. And uh, we investigated it a couple times using new market tax credits and, and it never came together. Um, this program is supposed to be uh, a lot more capital or um, have much higher capitalization, um, upwards of potentially $6 trillion over the next nine years. And uh, they get distributed into a limited number of census tracts throughout the country. The governor's office has a responsibility of designating census tracts um, up to 139 in Washington state that would be uh, qualified to the Department of Treasury. And so um, each county gets, des gets to designate a certain number of tracts. It turns out since Chelan County only has seven qualifying census tracts, um, they only get to designate one for Chelan County. Port of uh, Chelan County has that um, uh, obligation or um, opportunity to do that. And they have to get the blessing of the uh, Chelan County commissioners. So this week, the Port of Chelan County chose to designate our downtown census tract which is the northerly one here shown on the map. Um, it basically goes from Fifth Street down to Peachy, and then there's a little leg of it that goes down towards the George Cell Bridge. Packet, it's the middle one, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, yep. Thank you. the middle one. Um, and so uh, the Port of Chelan County designated that, the Chelan County commissioners embraced that designation. And so we're here tonight to um, request authorization to apply for the South Wenatchee track which goes from Peachy Street South down to Apple Yard. And then we'll also bring in and, and uh, a, what they call a contiguous track. It doesn't quite meet the qualifications, but it's eligible if it's contiguous, which would be the Malaga tract. And that's pretty much all of South Chelan County, which goes all the way down to Alcoa. So we're doing that in partnership with Chelan County with their support. And um, Effectively, if we're successful, this will allow for investment in private projects uh, in these in these uh, qualifying areas. The nice thing is, is regardless, uh, we'll have the downtown uh, track. And one of the reasons for that is that we have a lot of projects or several projects that are ready to go, including housing. Um, and so, uh, even if we only get the downtown track, we'll have some projects to uh, to apply for these funding these funds. So the, the, the Port of Chelan County is doing the application for the one that they as the associate development group mm -hmm. is making, and then we would be doing the competitive ones? <clears throat> yes. Are, are those due at the same time on Monday that the other one is? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, have a nice weekend. Yeah. <laughs> um, and are we providing a, a letter of support to the Port of Chelan's nomination as um, well as Chelan County? We, uh, we haven't... Uh, Drafting, we certainly could. It's not necessary. Their application is really simple. It's just designate a number and okay. a few lines. There's really no application part to it. So, yeah. We are actually using that Port of uh, Chelan County designation to help leverage mm -hmm. the interest and, and create that three track zone to make it. <coughs> I think it's going to be a very competitive application. There, there was a lot of um, discussion this week amongst Port folks and the city and the county as to. One of them gets the appointed from the port, and which one do you pick? And there was a lot of discussion about picking the Kashmir one. There was some talk about picking the South Guanache one. You couldn't pick the Alcoa one by itself because it's the wrong color. It's green and not blue. <laughs> and so uh, we made a point for picking the downtown track because we have projects that are ready to go, and we know which ones those might be. And so um, at the end of the day, thanks to some help from other folks in the community, they actually picked the downtown one. But part of picking the downtown one, as we said, I got Steve working this weekend, is we would make the competitive for 
South Wenatchee and try to bring the Alcoa track in on a competitive one. So mm -hmm. part of the handshake agreement was if you pick the downtown one, we will write the grant for the South Wenatchee and bring the Alcoa one in. And that's the one the port ultimately did. So Steve gets to write a grant over the weekend to try to help with that. And so uh, I think it worked out well for us. And who knows the mechanism for how this is going to work, right? I don't, someone's going to drop in with a parachute full of cash for us. Uh, it's got to be private into private deals. Mm -hmm. We can help facilitate, but there's now a second deal that came up today that might, so we've got now two deals that are close and ready for, so we'll, we'll see. Um, but you don't, you can't, be, you can't swim until you jump in the water, right? So we're, we're in the water. Steve, is there any, any, way to get an idea how much this might generate for or is this just kind of we throw it out and again we feel yeah. that they will come kind of deal well so the uh, department of treasury has to write the rules for the capital gains part of it but effectively the principle is is if if people invest their ga gains it's kind of like a 1031 exchange if they invest their gains over a certain period of time then the basis changes, so they actually save money and they share in those savings, which then drives. Plus, you get interest; that mm. they get interest on those uh, on all that uh, money set aside. So, that gets distributed out to probably community development financial institutions. That then we then private folks would apply for a project that you know, and they would argue this will this will raise the raise the the boat the tide for mm -hmm. all boats in this census tract. So it's, it's a way to get basically bigger investments into rural tracks that have the low, the, not the poverty rates, but lower income census yeah. tracks. Lower income, poverty, you know, uh, lack of job opportunities, food desert, all those social issues uh, play into it. And of course, our South, we have our South Wenatchee Action Plan, um, which is a huge help at this point. We also have, you know, the, the downtown plan even the waterfront plan, all these, all these efforts in the past are going to flow right into that grant application, making it a little easier to put together a, a compelling story. Well, it sounds like you have some interest uh, with the downtown ones. Do you have any interest from private investors in, in the South Wenatchee area? Um, there's a that couple. That you know of. I mean, yeah, there's, there's, they, uh, yeah the, uh, the South Wenatchee plan identified some opportunity sites. For example, Wilbur Ellis has a, mm -hmm. a really underutilized site. But we haven't had any any movement in terms of let's go, unless we're going to redevelop this site. The, all the interest is in downtown. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is the Catholic Family Project. That oh, yes. They approached us and said, we certainly hope you're yeah. um, submitting our tract because it could benefit our project that they're building. Uh, that mm -hmm. they want to build on the um, old yeah. Viewdale site. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. we, so the the I don't know how much the Catholic visit a three million dollar fifteen million fifteen million, and they just got two million from the state mm -hmm. through the stuff we looked at on the internet through Commerce. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and so, as they're putting together a package, if they get a low in, <laughs> low interest rate loan through this program for you know two percent for whatever, that might be enough to get the math to work where they can build. Yes. units right mm -hmm. it might actually work on widener's project right he might be able to mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. workforce housing to be able to get a low interest rate loan might be enough to get that one to the finish line mm -hmm. so when you think of you know ready projects mm -hmm. we got a couple that are close um there, there's not a ready project you know in, in malaga and you're not going to go build a park with it right so there's certain reasons why it's fitting these tracks a little bit better i think yeah all right, any other questions for Steve? If not, I would entertain a motion. Your Honor, I will make a motion for the City Council to authorize Mayor and staff to make application for Opportunity Zone designations. Second. Motion by Council Member Esparza, second by Council Member Bailey to authorize the Mayor and staff to make applications for Opportunity Zone designations. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. So we've got two public hearings. Do uh, you guys need a break or should we keep going? We all good? Let's roll. Yeah. Okay, let's roll through them. <laughs> so uh, first public hearing is regarding uh, interim control and mining. Um, for public hearings, we'll hear from staff <coughs> first. We'll turn it over to the public and then back over to the council for any action. Uh, specifically with this first one, because most of this work is going to be done at the Planning Commission level, we will accept public comment, but I just ask that you keep it fairly brief. 
Um, but it's a public hearing. We should take some public comment. But I would ask that you keep those comments brief because I think most of the work will be, again, taking place with the Planning Commission. So, Stephen, Matt, how are you guys doing? Good. Good. Good evening. Uh, Matt Parsons, Associate Planner. Uh, we're here with a resolution <coughs> that is uh, brings uh, findings and a work plan uh, for uh, in kind of fulfillment of the requirements for an inter the interim control that was passed under uh, Ordinance 2018-04 back on February 22nd. Uh, under state law, within 60 days, uh, required to hold a public hearing on the matter and adopt, uh, like I said, findings and a work plan. Um, this hearing was, was noticed on uh, March 11th in the Wenatchee World, um, and uh, the interim control will last for 12 months. Uh, basically, the work plan is very simple uh, that's being proposed. It's kind of a three-stage process, uh, working with the PUD, kind of figuring out, learning more about the issue of cr cryptocurrency mining, figuring out kind of what framework uh, is best um, to address it. And then kind of the middle stage being developing code, uh, public outreach, uh, working with stakeholders, those sorts of things. And then finally, uh, the third stage being kind of the, the code or policy adoption phase of the project. Um, and uh, staff recommends approval of this uh, resolution. And this will take uh, place over the next year. So this is a one year Correct. interim control. Mm -hmm. All right, any discussion for uh, either Stephen or Matt? All right, let's hear from many members of the audience that wish to address the council on this particular item. I'd ask to give your name and address for the record and uh, really kind of limit it to three or four minutes if you could. Mark, you gonna come up? My name is Mark Seaman, 1111 Okanagan Avenue. Mayor and Council, thank you so much. Um, I also want to thank staff, uh, as well as the Council and Mayor, for this moratorium that's been put into place. I think it's a smart and proactive effort to um, been, uh, avoid potentially large uh, catastrophic uh, consequences. Um, I have just a list of bulleted items. I'll just read those, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, land use and power use regulation will dictate how the city develops over the next five to ten years. However, it will have unintended consequences. Uh, the central business di uh, district prohibition, I would ask that the council also consider the option of conditional use permits or a threshold that limits electrical consumption. Um, I understand the prohibition of storefronts and uh, above grade floors that can be used for other um, commercial uses um, and maybe the, the allocation to below grade or basement levels is appropriate. Um, I also envision uh, Wenatchee developing a warehouse district or an arts alley, uh, particularly the, the two to three blocks that are north of Columbia Station. and going with the the concept of basement level only i would personally uh, not really encourage that entire two to three blocks be allowed to be developed with cryptocurrency mining um, i think there's better cultural advantages to having an arts alley or a, a warehouse district there are mixed use opportunities. I know there are business models out there for people to use cryptocurrency to help finance um, other ben uh, business ventures, particularly if they're already involved in technology. And there is also a, a multiple, multiple dimensional uh, aspect to electricity. Um, of course, there's the dollar value, but I think there's also a, a cultural value uh, just for an example, you know, we, we know the cost of uh, electricity per kilowatt, but I think if that, is, if that electricity is put through um, a machine, whether it's a server, you're going to get an output that will have certain value to it. Um, if it's put through, let's say, musical instruments and you have a band playing, there's a cultural value that is part of that electrical um, energy. 
And so there's a, a resource allocation. You, you put something in, um, you get something out. There's a community investment in the electrical infrastructure that we have. And however that electricity is used, the community will get a return on it. Um, so I encourage you know, consideration of the council on what cryptocurrency mining is going to do, uh, mostly on, on a cultural level. And I also want to mention that I am, am an employee of MJ Neal Associates, and we are the architects on the project for the, the mansion renovation, the old Jones & Jones funeral home. Um, the partners of that project have been working for over six months planning the renovation. Um, cryptocurrency mining was part of their business strategy to help finance it. And they have an application into the PUD. Um, they submitted that, I think, in July. So they are in process and they're kind of in this gray area of being caught in this moratorium and the potential of uh, not being able to do cryptocurrency mining in their uh, new facility. And again, they are a high-tech company. There's two companies going into the Jones & Jones funeral home. Um, they are technology driven and they support approximately 100 employees. They intend to use an innovative and integrated uh, strategy for heating and cooling the building. There's an opportunity to <coughs> capture heat that is part of the cryptocurrency mining and reallocate that to other areas of the building for heating during the winter time and snow melting outside on ramps and parking lots. They do plan on locating it in their basement so it's off alley. It is not at street front level. They have invested um, significant time, effort, and money uh, into this plan, and they expect to spend close to $2.55 million on this renovation. So the, the KJD partners, they're the owners of the, the mansion. Um, they would like to encourage the council to find a path that would allow them to continue on their process that they've been uh, on with this renovation. And that could be either through an amendment or um, just the understanding that they are kind of caught in the middle of this process where they've been working for months to make this happen. Um, they've been willing to go out on a limb to purchase this building that's been sitting vacant for 10 years. So they just, they would like to ask for your support on helping this venture stay moving forward. That's all I have, unless there's any questions. So I think, Glenn, I guess get it to the Planning Commission as you go through the normal to talk about this idea that once we come out of the moratorium or the interim controls that whether or not basement use, because we currently are taking it out of the central business district in its entirety and only allowing it in the industrial zones. So I think they're asking that during this process if we could relook re at the central business district and allow it in the basements of those from a land use perspective. How is that? Yes, well, I, my understanding is there is a significant um, concern about being in the central business district, taking away storefront right. uh, space um, for cryptocurrency mining. But I think there are opportunities, particularly in the basement levels. Right. And um, I agree with you, quite frankly. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thanks, Mark. Anybody else wish to address the council on the uh, work plan for the cryptocurrency? Seeing none, I will turn it over to the council for any action they may be willing to take. Your Honor, I would make a motion to adopt the findings and work plan as incorporated in resolution number 2018-13, continuing the inter interim official control on cryptocurrency mining operations in the city of Wenatchee as adopted under ordinance 2018-04. Second. Motion by Council Member Kulas, second by Council Member Markhart to uh, adopt resolution 2018 13, continuing the interim official controls on cryptocurrency in the city of Wenatchee as adopted by Ordinance 2018 04. Discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> and our last item this evening, which is a public hearing, is regarding the city of Wenatchee capital facilities plan. Stephen, how are you? 
Well, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Before you this evening is a uh, revision to the city's capital facilities plan. So on February 22nd of this year, uh, ordinance uh, or a uh, resolution ordinance was adopted amending the, the city's six-year transportation improvement plan. And that is a referenced and uh, item in the capital facilities plan as far as its date and ordinance number. And so before you is um, an ordinance, a resolution number 2018-14 that would uh, amend the city's capital facilities plan uh, to update that date uh, and ordinance number reference. Uh, this planning commission has um, held a public hearing and has recommended uh, unanimously to approve this change to the capital facilities plan. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Is, is this our once a year amendment to our comprehensive plan? <laughs> I was I was reading it today. <laughs> it's not it's not a budget amendment. Correct. So this would be our once a year this is comprehensive an, plan amendment. An amendment recommended by legal counsel to the city. So we won't be doing any more comprehensive plan amendments during this year. I don't know. It's That's a good question. Well, as, I, 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 I was reading it this afternoon yep. is why I brought it up because I'm kind of in the same incorporated in spot. It's part of the comp plan. You've got talking over there. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, not sure that I really have a, a, whether we're going to adapt anything this year. Most likely not given that our housing study and other projects that we're working on will not be completed by the end of this year. When? This this was advised by okay. AWC Legal Counsel uh, to take this action. Okay. All right. Your, your comment, Mark, is it? Yep. You I can mean, amend your comprehensive plan is, once a year, March, so and there are, get to November. there are exceptions for capital facility plans, and those deal with at the time you do it coincident either with a budget adoption or a budget revision the, or in, in, in this case a sub area plan as well that's not what we're doing okay all right any other questions for staff if not i turn over any member of the audience that wish to address the city council on the update of the wenatchee capital facilities plan See no one who's willing to uh, comment on the matter. I'll turn it over to their council for their action. Well, Your Honor, I move that we approve resolution number 2018 14, adopting minor amendments to the City of Wenatchee Capital Facilities Plan. Second. Motion by Council Member Bailey, second by Council Member Harold to approve resolution 2018 14, adopting minor amendments to the City of Wenatchee Capital Facilities Plan. Project yeah. or something. Discussion? Mm. Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. So it's kind of like a Mayor's report. I've got uh, like two or three quick items. Um, first, we've got a new utilities manager, Rob Jammerman. Rob, stand up, say hi. We got Rob. We uh, stole him from the city of Kirkland. He only had 30 years over there. <laughs> had to come over to the good side. But after just 30 years. Yeah, huh? No, he had to keep going. So we're excited to have him. Welcome. This is his first week at work. So good. Just Welcome. Sold a house, bought a house, and making one inch his home. So we're excited to have him. We had a meeting regarding the old station sewer on Tuesday, mm -hmm. Tuesday said. <laughs> uh, very well attended. Uh, I would say overall uh, with more excitement this time than the last time when we tried to do an LID. Uh, I think folks are uh, relatively excited about getting a sewer line. I think they're happy with the reduction in fees to hook up quickly. They want a payment plan and they don't want to join the city limits of the city of Wenatchee, but I, that's not part of the deal. So <laughs> if the other three are good enough, I think we're going to get quite a few hookups. So Matt's on an aggressive schedule, Matt and his team to he said it publicly that it would all be in the ground by the end of November of 2018. So we have a beer on that one. I don't know whether he's <laughs> going to get it done that fast. But so we do use the uh, waiver of annexation protest agreements yes. for the folks that are yes, outside. Yes, they all know it's coming. And we make sure that it's notarized. Yep, 
Whatever Tammy, they, they give Tammy the authority. <laughs> Remember? They had a notary at the meeting, yeah. just in case. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So they are all signing no protests and um, rotary, right rotary stamps and holsters. Yeah. So uh, we are going to probably have to put together a financing option for some of the folks. And I think we had enough people at the meeting indicated that financing the, the city's portion, the $8,000 hookup fee, that uh, we'd be willing to do that. So. Um, Brad and the team will be putting something together, but it sure. sounds like uh, uh, way more positive than a twenty thousand dollar LID, which was a proposal ten or twelve years ago. So, yeah. and no one threw anything at us. And I just said, Rob, who said it was a good meeting, he's been to one in Kirkland's, I'm sure. So he, he <laughs> thought it was okay. So well, there we go. Yep. Anything else, Allison, for the good of the order? Busy, busy. We sent you out a couple of um, signups. So United Way is bringing uh, diversity training that will be really wonderful diversity training. There's scholarships available for that. Um, and then the Flywheel Conference we sent out to you. This is um, this conference is a huge Herculean effort to bring companies who, here who are competing for funds. They're also bringing some really uh, amazing speakers. Uh, and um, Jenny uh, with Guada is wanting to make sure that the Performing Arts Center is packed that day. So that day is 9 to 4. Um, there's an evening session over at the BPOE Center. April April 19th. April 19th, mm -hmm. which is a Thursday. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, through one of our funds, contributed mm -hmm. some money to Flywheel. So we have six tickets mm -hmm. available. But any members of the council that want to go, if you want to spend your 9 to 4 there, mm -hmm. uh, we will either use one of our free tickets or pay for you guys. Department heads can go if they want to go. I'd even drop down a level if there's people that think it's real important. Um, going to be a great day. Uh, a lot of really smart people in the room. So if anyone's interested, mm -hmm. just let us know and we'll come up with some money to get us in the in the room. Okay. Howard Wright is one of the lead speakers mm -hmm. who founded the Space Needle and still owns the Space Needle and is a big in hospitality and oh, okay. so going to be a great day. Anything else, council members? Anything for the good of the order? Um. April, April 3rd from 2 to 4, there will be an active shooter training at the Wenatchee Convention Center. Officer Corey Bernasch is... glad you used the term training because if we were going to advertise the well, active shooter, right? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, you're invited to join us. It's free of charge. Uh, it's something that I went to him to put together for our staff because I just feel like it's you can never be too prepared right. if you can prepare it for such an event. But anyone that is interested, you're more than welcome to join us. Okay. So next week, no meeting. The week after, no meeting. So we visit again in regular session on Thursday the 10th, 11th. April 12th. April 12th. And also we have an officer commissioning on Monday at 2.30 here. Yeah, we've got Council two Town. new officers to swear mm -hmm. in, uh, yeah. the young lady and then the transfer from Nebraska. Oh. So we're good. Two for Monday. <laughs> All right, anything else for the good of the order? Go Zags, we're adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>